preach this, of course, to all of us that that uh, have a family now. I preach to us to, to share this with you. I also preach it to us that, that may you might be at the point where you're saying, well, I don't have a family right now. Well, cool. Uh, I can guarantee you somebody might come into your life pretty soon where you end up with a family. And, and also understand this, uh, if I don't say anything that, that relates to your life right now, there are many people out there that are hurting, that are hurting. And anyone that has a word for them that can help them with their family, this might be something that we, as we share it with you, that might be able to help somebody else. And so uh, that's, what, that's why we're giving this and, and we're sharing this with you on a, in a Sunday morning type setting. Um, this morning we're going to be dealing with uh, understanding each other. We're going to talk about understanding each other and we're going to deal with some things as it comes out of the scripture and as it relates out of God's word. If you would get your Bible, we're going to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5 verses 21 through 33. Ephesians chapter 5 verses 21 through 33. A lot of verses there um, that, that we want to read to you on, on this morning. Of course, we're coming out of the New Living Translation of Ephesians 5. So again, Ephesians 5, verse 21 through 33. And again, we're going to be talking about understanding um, each other. And this is the Apostle Paul as he talks to the church at Ephesus because it's very important to understand uh, why Paul um, teaches about marriage. Um, here is a young church, a young church, because, you know, in the first century, Jesus has just, you know, came onto the scene. He's given his life. He's died. He went back to be with the Father. And now we have started the Christian church. Well, now, so this is a young church. Now, most of what this young church has seen uh, modeled is the pagans living. They, they seen how they've been married. They seen how they have lived the life. And of course, the, the pagans have been a bad example because they, they weren't committed to their marriages. They weren't committed to, to living the way that God would have them to live. And so they had to get some biblical instruction or some spiritual instruction about how to do family life. And I think even today, let's tell the truth, let's tell the truth. Even today, we need biblical instructions on how to do family life. Okay? We, we cannot get our instructions from A&E channel. We can't get it from there. We can't get it from BET. We can't get it from uh, the housewives. We can't get it. No. We, we got to get biblical instructions about how to live our lives. And so here we see Paul giving the church at Ephesus biblical instruction about how to live their lives. Okay? Ephesians 5, um, starting at the 21st verse. And further, submit to one another out of the reverence for Christ. For wives, this means, submit to your husbands as to the Lord. For a husband is the head of his wife, as Christ is the head of the church. He is the Savior of his body, the church. As the church submits to Christ, so ye wives should submit to your husbands in everything. For, for husbands, husbands, this means love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave up his life for her to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. He did this to present her to himself as a glorious church without a spot or wrinkle or any other blemish. Instead, she will be holy and without fault. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as they love their own bodies. For a man who loves his wife actually shows love for himself. No one hates his own body, but free, but frees and cares for it. Excuse me, but feeds and cares for it, just as Christ cares for the church. And we are members of his body. As the scriptures say, a man leads his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united in one. This is a great mystery, but it is an illustration of the way Christ and the church are one. So again, I say, each man must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. Everybody say amen. amen. Thank God for the reading of his word. There's a lot there, and that's, we're going to deal with some of this and talk about some of this and, and get into the word of God and just allow the word of God to bless us. Again, uh, we're going to be kind of be talking about understanding each other, understanding each other. Uh, how many of you remember owning a, a VCR? Anybody remember owning a VCR? Uh, yeah, 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 I thought you would, yeah, uh, okay. Uh, uh, how many of you, when you owned the VCR, you knew how to program the VCR? Yeah, okay, okay, good. Most of us who owned a VCR didn't know how to program. Now, we knew how to, we knew how to set it up to record our show. But I'm talking about, you know, if we wanted to program it for, to record something two weeks from now and stuff like that, most of us had no idea uh, how to program that VCR. Because there's a difference between owning something and understanding how it works. 
did you hear what I said? There is a difference between owning something and understanding how it works. And I say that about marriage as well. And I say that about family, okay? There's a difference between having a husband or having a wife and having a family, but, it, but there's a difference between knowing how it works, okay? I, I have a wife, but that don't mean I know how a wife works, okay? And so, so what we want to talk about is, is understanding. There's a scripture in 1 Peter 3 and 7 with, that says this, and this is uh, one of the verses that says, You husbands, likewise, live with your wives in an understanding way, as with a weaker vessel, since she is a woman, and grant her honor as a fellow heir of the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered. So it says, says to the husbands that husbands need to live with their wives in an understanding way. And listen, that's an interesting term, in an understanding way. Now, it talked directly to husbands, but I think that, that, that we all understand, uh, and, and probably, by the way, I, I hear your husbands as I read that, you know, you're probably going, it's easier to understand quantum physics than it is to understand your wife. And, um, and I know you ladies probably feel the same way about your husband, you know. Uh, give me calculus before you give me understanding that dude. Uh, I, I can't figure him out. Um, but, but I believe that this scripture, as, as it relates, of course, is addressed to husband. But it's not, it's not bad biblical interpretation to suggest that this principle deals with everybody in the family. That we all need to understand each other. Because if we don't understand each other, then there's always going to be trouble. It's always going to be trouble in the camp, Cynthia, if we don't understand each other. So what does it mean to understand another person? It means to make what is important to the other person as important to you as the other person is to you. So we need to take each individual person in our families and we need to learn to understand them. And especially for those that have been blessed with uh, multiple children, you have to be able to understand each particular child. Amen? Amen. And you have to make what is important to them as it is important to you. So that's your job. That's a very important principle because a lot of times the, what we do is we make what's important to us. I heard somebody say guilty. I'm, just, I'm trying to move on. Uh, we, we, you know, whatever's important to me, that's the only thing that matters, okay? But if I'm going to understand my wife, I got to find out what's important to her. And once I find out what's important to her, I have to act like, or I have to live like, not act like, I have to live away. I got it, 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 I got it. And maybe that's, you know what? You maybe, know, there is some truth, truth to it, it now. Maybe okay. that's, yeah, maybe that's some, you know, sometimes okay. an issue, an act. Be because if it's not, if it's not, if it's not important to me, the marriage is so important to me that I, that if I don't have it in my heart, I still have to act like it's important to me until I get it in my heart. Because here's what I, this, here's what I learned. Here's what I learned. I, I, can I, can I, can I confess something? Can I confess something? There were some things that were important to her that really were not important to me. But I acted like it was important. And the more I acted like it was important, sooner or later it became important. Because I began to understand it from her perspective. And so we, we need to learn how to live like that, that whatever is important to this person that I'm married to or this person that's in my family, because it's important to them, I have to live like it's important to me as well. Which means that the same effort that she would give to it is the same effort that I must give to it. The same thought that she would give to it is the same thought that I must give to it. Why? Because it's important to her that it ought to be important to me. Okay. Praise the Lord. And I'm sure that's a hard saying. I mean, no doubt that's a hard saying because your uh, attitude, mm. your behavior has to model all that. Where you're like, okay, that is just, you know, that's not my cup of tea. I don't understand what's so important about, you know, all these football games, every channel on a sports show. I don't understand all that. I mean, one TV is good. But I have to, even my attitude and my behavior, my mannerisms, my body language, because we know we can, you can turn people off just with your body language. And you can say, you're like, okay, yeah, they're not even listening. Matter of fact, they're gone. They checked out. And so it's very important that if I say that I'm going to, you know, understand you, then I have to get in, like, almost like to get in your place and understand why you enjoy what you enjoy and then be willing to celebrate that. Yeah, it's like you said, very difficult mm -hmm. to understand why you like all them chick flicks. It is very difficult. 
but when she wants me to sit there and watch the chick flick with her deliver us today Lord from evil uh, but you, you know but that's important and so in, in, in living with each other according to some knowledge we have to we have to approach it in that way in order to live in that person's life to live in that person's atmosphere to live in that person's uh, desires and and so it, and by the way if you're listening to us under the sound of our voice right now and you're single and you're listening to us and saying you know what I want I don't want to do that then let me suggest to you do not get married okay do not get married okay and if you're listening to me and you are married and you're not doing this you need to change your ways don't try to get the other person to change their ways because I like what I like okay she likes what she likes okay and and so that that's what that that's what she wants to do so I need to learn how to do it I can tell you this here's the one thing that that when we first got married um, um, it just wasn't in my DNA to do shopping shopping now she talks about that attitude thing <clears throat> I would go shopping with her to the mall I don't think it ought to take an hour to be in a store I just don't think that I just I just think that when you go into a store you're supposed to go into the store know what you're gonna get pull it up out of the store and the mall the entire mall experience ought to take an hour not the one store experience the entire and, and so I, when, when we first got married boy I used to walk around and stalk her that's the first thing I would do be on her neck <sighs> you, you ready to go we, yeah. we, we ready mm. and then when I knew that that was upsetting her I would go and, and sit on the man chairs that they got out there and that don't help and that is not that's not good either that ain't good either okay because I was looking like you know like the other men. That's what I was looking like. Okay, I was looking like the other men. She better come on here. Okay, I'm about to leave her up in here. Okay, but but I had to learn how to appreciate the shopping experience with her. Now, yes, yes, I got it. <laughs> I got it, okay? Because I, I learned to live in her world. And so what we're going to talk about, we, we're going to talk about some of the things that, 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 that I would need from her or she would need from me as it relates to uh, uh, our relationship together, okay? All right. So the husband is to be a servant leader of his wife. Amen. So he is to serve his wife. I'm amen. I don't know what that's about. Can, can I ask you a question about that serve? Is that serve like, like, prison term, like serving time? <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, is that what I'm doing? Am I serving? I just need to know. Okay, no, that's not. Uh, no, that's not time. prison time. Oh, praise the Lord! Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> okay. But uh, to serve me is to, as you serving me. Though these are you serving my desires, my wants, what's important to me. Um, you're doing what I want you to do. Mm. So. <laughs> so that's how you are to serve me. And it's almost like if you set out a, a you know, if I'm sitting at a dining room table, we can identify with food, and you just come up to me as a waiter and say, Cynthia, what do you want? And so there's no set menu. The menu is endless. That's how you serve me. Okay, I got it. Servant. But I also notice that you, you put this word, you said to be a servant leader. Mm -hmm. Okay, to be a servant leader. And I hope y'all heard this, brothers, because, because, yes, I'm the leader, but I am the servant leader. I'm the servant leader. In other words, when, when Jesus comes about, he's their leader. But Jesus said, listen, I didn't, I didn't, came for I didn't come for y'all to serve me. I came to serve you all. 
I came to minister to the needs of the world. I come to minister to the needs of the people. In the same sense, as a husband, it is my responsibility to, to be the servant leader of my wife. Yes, I lead her, but I lead her in a sense of service, okay? Now, since you, you talked about what the husband needs to be, um, can I talk about what, the, you know, what, what I need? Okay, um, let's see. I, I need the wife then to be a submissive partner to the husband. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I knew I can get one clap. The Let's brothers were scared to clap. Just, just the brothers were scared to clap. They were scared. I, I need, I need since, since you want me to be that servant leader, then I need the wife to be a submissive partner to this. Now, 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 when I talk about being a submissive partner, understand this. I don't want to control you. Right. And I don't want you I, to. I, don't, I, I know you don't. I, I know. <laughs> I don't want to control you because a, a controlling man is an evil man. Yes. A, a controlling man is an evil man. So, so, so I don't want to. I don't want to control you. That's that's not my goal. That's not that's not what I want. But what I'm asking you to do as a wife is to be a submissive partner. Key word here: submissive partner. Okay, which means this: that in the in our in our life in our family we are partners, equal, equal in everything that we're doing. We're equal. Okay. Now I understand that I have a role to be a leader in the house. So in everything that I'm that I'm doing, I'm considering your input in what I'm doing. Okay? If I got to make a decision about the house, I consider your input. I don't just make a decision by myself, but I get your input. Okay? But here's what must happen if there's ever a time where 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 okay, my way I got one way and you have another way. Okay? Because I am the leader and you and you have made yourself submissive to me when it comes to those decisions that we just can't get along I need you to trust me since I'm your head why y'all ain't saying nothing ladies ain't saying nothing I'm getting clapped from men right now I don't understand that okay I need you to trust me because because listen to this listen to this you would not have married me unless you trusted me Hey, ladies, let me get to my single ladies real quick again. Hey, single ladies, don't you ever marry a man that you cannot trust to make decisions. And by the way, by the way, I'm going to say this and I'm going to get in trouble right now. I'm going to get in trouble right now. But you know what? You know what, gentlemen that are, that are single? One of the reasons why a lot of women have decided to stay single is because brothers have shown themselves to, do, to be too immature. And to marry an immature man is to make a fatal decision. Because if you cannot make decisions, if, can, if you can't even make decisions about your own life, how are you going to make decisions about... You have to understand that and you have to know that, okay? All right? And, 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 and then the second thing is, again, again, don't forget about this partner aspect of it. We always must understand there is a partner aspect to marriage, and that's what I want my wife to be. I want my wife to be my partner in this. Okay? All right. Amen. Next, I need you to bring out the best in me. Oh, I need you to be able to see my purpose. I mean, it's wonderful, you know, you can see everybody else's purpose and true vine purpose and, you know, our daughter's purpose and all that, but I need you to be able to see my purpose. I need you to be able to see uh, the gifts in me and the talents in me and what I have to offer. And then to take that and push me and challenge me and so in being able to put your energies into me. So that's what I need for you to bring out the best in me. Hmm. Okay. All right. Well, then I suppose that I can say the same thing to you. Yes. I need you to bring out the best in me. Because your role, let me tell you something. Y'all heard me say this for years, okay? You heard me say this for years. That, that all the accolades that I get from people and other uh, people outside and all, that's fine and dandy, okay? But when you speak into me and when you tell me you see something in me, that brings out the best that's in me. When you speak well of me, when, when you talk well of me, when you tell me that I'm the best thing out there, oh my God, thank you, Jesus, glory to God. There's nothing like a man that's been affirmed by his woman. Oh, y'all don't want to, y'all don't, 
the, the, there is nothing like a man that has been affirmed by his woman okay it is important that my wife don't call me crazy it's important that my wife don't call me stupid it's important to me and my wife don't tell me you don't know what you're doing because when she does that what it does is it quenches me it it takes the the very earnest that is in me balls it up and throws it down and steps on it but even when I make a wrong decision she can still bring out the best in me even when I do some stupid stuff because eventually I'm a man I have to tell you this I'm going to do something stupid see the brothers didn't they remember right there they just went they just went they just went mm, I ain't going to talk about that yeah eventually I'm going to do something stupid I'm a man I, that's how I was brought up man. I grew up you know jumping off of houses I mean that's what men do you know doing wheelies on bikes and stuff like that the, the girl was just riding the bike we doing wheelies so eventually we're going to do something stupid and bump our head but still you can bring out the best in me and I believe that God brings us into each other's lives in order for us to complete each other. Now, I, I know, I know, I know, I know the teaching in, in, in singles ministry. They say you need to all, you need to be complete first before you get married. And that sounds good. And I think that what helps that, what that does, it, it helps you through, through your single process. Okay. That's all that, that y'all don't like my talking. It helps you through your singleness process. Because you will guarantee, I will guarantee you this, that when you get married, you will find out that that other person is meant to complete your life. If Adam would have been complete, the Lord would have never said to Adam, it's not good for you to be alone. I am not getting any amens right now, but let me keep moving on. Okay? And so it is important that, that we all understand this and know this. And so my wife brings out the best in me. Okay? All right. And next, I need you to help me to develop. Oh my God. And help me to grow as a person. And we have to understand that we change as we get older. We mature and we evolve. I mean, I'm not the 18 year old you married. I mean, long ways from it. Um, long ways from it. <laughs> and so I need you to help develop me as in each stage of my life in each area of my life and as I mature and as I evolve things will change about me that what I did at 18 or 25 or 35 I'm not doing at 46 and so that way I need you to be able to just flow with me and so and then just just go with me so I need you to develop me can I ask you a question about that development thing? Sure. Okay. Sure. Um, um, in me helping you to develop, you know, because sometimes y'all think that we're being pushy. That's true. And 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 when when you feel like that we're being pushy, then you push back. Yes. So how do I know then how how not to be pushy, but yet help you to develop? How? I'm just trying to get some help here. That's, cause I don't want to get in no trouble. I like, I don't like being in the doghouse. I like being in the house. That's all. Huh. Well, how can you help develop me? Yeah. I, okay. Yeah. So I don't be pushy. Uh, um, I don't be pushy. Okay. Or do you want me to be pushy and you just no, you just acting no, funny? No. No. But that's what you really want. No. No. I don't oh, okay. want you to be pushy. All right. Um, I want you to be able to. Um, based on my personality, mm -hmm. based on who I am, you can make suggestions. Mm. Okay, I don't respond well to being, you know, pushy stuff. Or so making suggestions, mm. and then um, in such a way oh that God. is not just, you know, flippantly a suggestion, but okay. then this is such a way that you. I'm keep on suggesting this okay and so that will be very important uh -huh. that you keep on suggesting this or matter matter of factly mm -hmm. and if you want to help develop me it's not at that moment where you need to change something at that moment you can develop me when everything is all good and then we can have that matter of factly conversation um, we can have you know be able to have a sit down and nice intimate setting we can just be able to talk and so it's very important that you suggest to me but then it's also body language mm. because I you know I can tell when you like oh god here she goes 
So, <laughs> but body language, mm -hmm. and to know that you know you are listening to what I said, and that way you are making suggestions based on what I said. So. Okay, thank you. All right, and so guess what? What? The same thing you said to me. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing I'm gonna say to you. That the wife is to help her husband to develop and to grow as a person. Now, understand this. One of the one of the there are two areas where I, as a man, need your help in development. The first person, the first place is as a spiritual man. Okay? I need your help to develop and grow as a man of God. Okay? Um, because I'm going to say this and I, I get in trouble with stuff I say and I'm saying it anyway. Um, many times, many times, women are more sensitive to God than men are. Okay? I want to get to where you are in God. I want to I want to experience what you have experienced in God. I want to I want to be touched by and, and experience God like you experience God. So I need you to help me to develop and to grow. Ladies, make sure that you never neglect your husband as it relates to him growing as a spiritual man of God. Listen to me. I'm not talking about growing in a title. Because men in the church get titles quickly. It does not mean that they are growing as a spiritual man because they get a title quickly. I know I am. I need y'all to hear that. And so, and so what we need, what we need as men, or what I need as a man, is I need you to help me to, to develop and to grow as a man, as a spiritual man. Because my responsibility, if, I, if I'm clear on this, my responsibility is to be the priest of the home. Okay? If I don't know how to be a priest, if I don't know how to be a man of God, if I don't know how to pray, if I don't know how to say what I need to say in order to cover you, then teach me. Now again, I need you to be sensitive with me like you asked me to be sensitive with you. Because I don't want you to be telling me what to do, per se. Because if you come in here telling me what to do, I'm going to tell you I'm the man. Is any brothers in here? I'm going to tell you, I'm the man. Okay, but if you if you if you just be sensitive with me and, and, and train me and teach me and, and show me th some things that will help me to be the man so that I can cover you spiritually. And the second thing, as it relates to me being a man, is I need you to help me to help me develop and grow as a father. As a father, um, one of the things that we don't talk about in church is that a lot of times men are not family oriented, even though they're having babies, even though they're having kids. A lot of times men are not family oriented because men are more work oriented. Okay, this ain't going over too well. Men are more work oriented. Okay, and because we are work oriented, we put all our time into work, we, we substitute work for family. In other words, I'm taking care of my family if I'm going to work. If the bills are being paid, I'm taking care of my family. Well, you're not spending time with your kids. Well, I'm... What are you talking about spending time? I'm taking care of my family. I'm working. I'm, I'm bringing in the bread. Everything is good because I'm doing that. Now, I'm not, I'm not hugging my son. I'm not affirming my son. I'm not, I'm not taking my daughter on a date night. I'm not doing all that stuff. I'm not doing it because I, as a man, I'm more work-oriented than anything else. And so, therefore, I need you to help me develop and to grow as a father. Now, I know that doesn't make any sense because I know fathers are listening to me and saying, well, how are you, you going to learn it from your wife? She ain't no father. Well, mothers are more family oriented. And sometimes they need to sit us down and we need to listen when they tell us we ain't doing enough for our kids. We're not spending enough time without, oh, Lord Jesus. So, so help me as it relates to family. Help me to develop and to grow because I want to be I want to be the best father. I want when they have Father's Day that, that they say that my daughter says that he's the best father. Okay, all right. Can I go first this time? Sure. Since you're going first, well, sure. can I go first? Yeah. Well, let me just um, uh -uh. echo something. Oh, okay. that you, <laughs> um, let me just echo something that you said about men being more work related. Um, and it's important that men uh, d don't allow material things to take the place mm. of the nurturing, the affection. Well, I just bought them an iPad. I just bought them a new phone. What else do they want? 
Well, you know what? Take all that away. I mean, I think most people can testify to the fact, you know what? Take all the material stuff away. If I could just have the love of my parent, the affection of my parent, the nurturing of my parent, my parents spending time with me and communicating with me and talking to me, take all that stuff away. That is not that important. And so it's very important that men don't substitute the latest technology. The bigger home, the nicer car, things that the outside world can see, but then on the inside, you don't even talk to me. And so it's very important. Does, does, um, what about for Valentine's Day? What about for Valentine's Day? Yeah. Well, I mean, I bring you some flowers. Is that good enough? And that, oh, that, oh, you know, you I don't love, need me to talk to you, right? You just, need you know, me. I love flowers. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. you know, but you can I'll talk to me while you present me the flowers, okay. right. you know. Um, and you know, again, I just thought of something else. What? When we talk about, you know, fathers mm-hmm. and they are, you know, again, substituting material things mm-hmm. or they should substitute money for everything. Mm-hmm. And I know my dad was like, okay, well, here's $20, here's $100, here's money for this, money for that. And so it's very important that even you don't allow money to take the place of the affection, you know. So. I'll say that we're gonna move from that, but but I'll say this: um, I'm a product of divorce, and uh, I can remember uh, longing for my father's, um, you know, love, just longing for it, just some way, somehow. And 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 I especially need to say this. Forgive me for saying this right now. Um, if if any of you fathers are separated from your kids, your kids want your love. Okay. And let me say this: as a product of this, don't make promises that you don't plan on keeping. Okay? Don't make promises because, because that child lives according for that promise. You say, I'm coming to see you on Tuesday at 12 o'clock at 11.58. They out they looking out the window. Okay? And there's nothing like being hurt by a father who made a promise and didn't show up. And by the way, we can use that as well with children that are in the house as well. Okay? Let's make sure that, that with our kids, because you know how our kids are now. You make your kid a promise, they have an expectation, and that promise is going to come through. It's the same type of attitude that we have toward God. God makes us a promise. Come on. We expect the promise to come through. Our kids, when we make promises to them, we have to ensure that we are there and that we're going to come through for them. Okay, I guess we... That, that's enough on that. We got, you got more yeah. on that? Okay. All right. Let me, let me give you one of the things that I need from you. Uh, I think we'll do one more and we, we'll, we'll kind of bring this in and pray, I guess, in a moment. Um, um, as the wife, um, I need you um, to take responsibility for the making of the home. The making of the home. Here's what I believe about you, Cynthia. I believe that you set the atmosphere of the house. Okay, the peace and the tranquility of the house is dependent upon you. Everything that happens in the house is dependent upon the spirit that you bring into the house. Okay, I can bring, I can come into the house mad, upset, frustrated, overwhelmed, ready to kick the dog and throw the fish out the water so they can die. Okay, I can come in feeling like that, but if you have set an atmosphere in that house that is different than what I brought into the house. My atmosphere, my my things begin to submit itself to what you have set up in the house. So so you make the house. You you are the person that I I believe that's responsible for making the home. Okay? And, and that's what that's that's what I need from you. Peace, tranquility, the joy of the house comes from you. Okay? Okay. All right. And so if I am to take care of the home, mm-hmm. the making of the home, mm-hmm. then as my husband, I need you to be able to take the lead in the home. Mm-hmm. I need you to be able to take care of the home. Mm -hmm. Um, All the financial obligations, everything that needs to be done so that I can successfully make the home. Mm -hmm. And so it's very important that as a wife that I should not, uh, I shouldn't be concerned, if you will, about did the mortgage get paid. Mm -hmm. I should not be concerned do we have insurance on this. Mm -hmm. Um, should not be concerned that you know appliances broke down and mm-hmm. and you know what it's still not working mm-hmm. and so I need you to be able to take care of those things in order that therefore I can make the home I can spend all my time making the home making the atmosphere setting the atmosphere right and that way everything can go peacefully mm-hmm. because when things are in an uproar and going on in the home things are breaking down things are you know then that's going to set me off 
And so therefore, then if, that, if that's a problem, then you're going to be frustrated with me. And so it's very important that the man take care of his responsibilities as a home. Whether it's a home, okay, if that's what we can afford, we get a home. If it's an apartment, that's what we can afford, then you take care, do what you got to do, take care of the home. Whatever it is, being able to make sure that as a man that I am not concerned about um, the well-being or if we're going to be evicted, if we're going to be this, uh, the car going to be, somebody going to come and get the car. I don't want to have to deal with that. Okay. All right. Now, of course, now, Cynthia, we just now fell off a, a large cliff. You know that. We just yeah. fell off a large cliff because we just now talked about traditional values within the home. And I know some of you, as we were talking, you were going, mm, mm, mm. Um, but, but I still believe, I still that believe that the man, the man, I still believe that the man has the responsibility of leading the home and ensuring that things are taken care of financially at the home. That if, that if, I'm not saying, and again, women, I, I, y'all go ahead and do what you want to do. As long as you want to do it, it's, it's up to you. That's fine. I don't live in your house. Great. Okay. But if, for instance, I remember when me and my wife first got married, and I, of course, I was, not of course, but I was in the military, and so I was bringing home all the checks. Then she decided at one time or another to go get a job. And I was like, cool, go get a job. She went and got a job, and she kept the job for, uh, I don't know how long, but she didn't keep the job that very long. Okay, and she, then, then, uh, then she went and got another job. Okay, I've always felt this way. I've always felt this way. It is my responsibility to take care of that house financially. If my wife wants to work, she can work. If she doesn't want to work, she doesn't have to, yeah, the claps have left me that time. Didn't if she doesn't want to work, she doesn't have to work because I'm the man of the house. I'm not supposed to be no lazy man. Don't ever marry a lazy man. A man that don't want to do nothing, don't want to go to work. If he ain't going to work while you're dating, he ain't certainly ain't going to go to work when you get married. If all he's doing is playing video games now, when he marry you, he's going to have more money to go get more video games. Okay, so so seriously, seriously. So you got to be responsible for for for. Uh, I'm prepared to do whatever I need to do in order to take care of my house. And if she doesn't want to do go to work, if she don't want to do anything, and she want to stay at the house, then she can do that. Now, of course, she might she don't want to do that. She want to go out. She want to do something. She works here at the church. She comes and stuff. That's fine with me as well. But as a man, we have to be prepared to take care of our family. We were in this discussion recently. I think it was the other day uh, on Friday, and I was talking with me and the brothers. I was talking to the brothers about taking care of our families, and I was telling them. Matter of fact, uh, Robert, me and Robert was in this conversation when Robert told me he was just now looking for a generator, and I told him, man, I just now bought my generator. Now, why did I buy a generator? I don't know them about those generators. I bought a generator because my responsibility to take care of the family that just went over your head it's my responsibility to take care of the family that if the lights go out it's my responsibility to make sure they come back on so I spent 600 and some dollars for a generator that I don't know nothing about that if a storm come through Fayetteville and turn off the lights for six days my wife ain't gonna be cold because it's my responsibility to take care of my family. I'm not getting no amens now. Every man, as a man, you got to be thinking. If this happens, how am I going to take care of my family? If this goes down, how am I going to take care of my family? When I was coming up, in the, when I was coming up, got saved in the, in the early '80s, and I said, and I only said that because and what I'm getting ready to say is it relates to that time. My pastor used to teach us as men that men ought to always be able to get their hands on a thousand dollars. Now again, that was back in the '80s, it's probably a little bit more now, okay? But they ought to always be able to get their hands on a thousand dollars. Why? So if something happens in the house, that they can get it taken care of. That's a man understanding I got a responsibility to take care of my family. And so, and so in order to, to, to be the leader that Cynthia is asking me to be, I got to be thinking beyond that. I got to think beyond just the natural things that I know what to do and all that kind of stuff. I got to think beyond. I got stuff in my I got I got saws. I got electric screwdrivers. I got all this. I got it. I ain't no, mm -mm, believe me. If I can get to Hank, I'm going to call Hank. Believe me. Seriously, I'm going to call Hank. I'm going to say, Hank, come over here and fix it. But if I can't get to Hank, I got to do something. 
the, my wife can't be cold. She can't be. She can't be too hot. She can, I got everything's got to be taken care of because she wants me to be the leader in the home. And and let me go back to um, you said that you needed me to be a submissive partner, and so and then I in that partnership. Where in 2013, we know that, of course, women are working. And based on the needs of the home, the children, the economic, and all that, um, that it's important that the wife does work. We understand that. Um, but we also have to think about if the woman, we have this partnership, we have this agreement that that is what we choose to do as man and woman. This is how we choose. We, we're living a certain way. That this is the way we, uh, we want to live. We have a standard of living, so therefore it's going to require both of us to work. And there's nothing wrong with that. But you have that partnership going. So therefore, when you're doing that partnership, and you say, well, you know what, this is our standard of living, then you just can't quit on your, quit your job next week. Because you said we had, this is the way we wanted to live. We have a, our standard of living and the standard we have for our children. So you just can't up and quit your job. And so even in that partnership, we have to be able to talk and, and understand what's going on. And then at the same time, if the woman in this partnership, if the woman says, you know what, I'm having so much trouble on my job, I'm coming home and I'm stressed, mm. things, you know, supervisors give me a hard time, I need you to come home. all that, then you know what, can I quit my job? And can we make the adjustments until I find something else? Because again, you want to serve her. And you want to make sure that she's happy because if she's got, got to deal with somebody all day long on the job and then she got to come home, deal with children, deal with the husband, you know, that's a hard task. <laughs> that is a hard task. Okay? And so it's very important that you have that communication open that if this is a partnership, this is what we choose to do. And the man don't just come home and say, I quit my job. What? <laughs> you know, what? <laughs> For real? No, I, matter of fact, I expect you to take it. I'm sorry. Now, me, I'm the weaker vessel, so. Now you're the weaker vessel. Got to know when oh. to put it in there. Got to know when to put it in there. You don't win scripture now. Okay. But I expect the man to be able to take it. And if, if he can't take it, by the time he get in the car, pull that car in the garage, he get himself together, shut it all down, and when he come in the door, he walk in and he's peaceful. And I say, oh, babe, how was your day? Oh, it was good. Okay? Or if he want to talk about it, but he won't allow it to wear on him. And so it's very important that the man be the man. If he's going to make some decisions, then we do it as a partner if that was our agreement. All of a sudden, I want to quit work and go to school full time. What? Again, agreement, partnership. What are, I need to know, you know, we need to be able to talk about and communicate. What are we doing? And then have a plan. Because if you're going to school and you're, oh, you're being fulfilled, you're thinking about a new career job, and then, you know what, we're struggling. And then we try to decide which cell phone to turn off. No, you know. So you got to be able to make decisions. Okay, and we and then we put you know we have a, such a standard of living for our children. I mean, some of us, yeah, we're over the top. I understand that, but then even still, you you know raising children and you raising them a certain way, and then all of a sudden you say, well, you know what, we can't go and go into the mall and shop this week. Do this, do that, go on this trip. We you know because they're used to a standard of living, and so that's a culture shock for them. All of a sudden, you know, you, you're doing things totally different. This was not the way we raised. Now we're doing things totally different. Now, again, I'm not talking about when economic hardships and things like that happen and loss, employment loss and all that. But when you even, when you are raising a family and there's such a standard, it's hard to take a child back because they don't understand. You put them in name brand since they were two. Now, all of a sudden, you're talking about they can't have name brand. Go to Payless and get some shoes. They got a problem. You've been spending a hundred dollars on their shoes all this time. Well, I should say 150 Jesus. on their shoes all this time. Now you want to buy some for $79. They don't understand that because that's your standard you put on them. Ain't nobody tell you to do that. You buying them name brands. Ain't nobody tell you to do that, even if you had the money. 
So if you got a, a standard for them, then they want to stay in certain clothes. They don't know any different. So again, if we're going to do that standard, again, we have to have a partnership going on. Very good. And and as she was talking about in that partnership and 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 got to have a plan. Remember that you have to have a plan. And also, but but be honest, okay? If the plan doesn't work, then don't pout, okay? If, if you the two of you sit down and she talked about you know maybe somebody coming off the job or something like that, and you look at you know your standard of living and and your coming off the job doesn't work, or you're going to school full time doesn't work, guess what? Stop pouting. It just does not work. We ha maybe we can do this later on, but we cannot do this right now because we, we have a standard of living we have a place that we had in life and if we do this how are we going to pay the house note okay and the church ain't going to pay you a house note yeah just get you no church ain't paying you a house note okay church will help you but the church ain't going to be paying you a house note every month the more I praise and the more the church pay my house note no no Okay, you have to look at the plan, whether or not the plan works. If the plan doesn't work, then you have to come up with a different plan. Okay, so we talked about, um, again, this has been talking about understanding each other. Um, and, and it's very important, I believe, to the success of the family that we understand each other. We, that I understand my wife, my wife understands me. We talk a little portion about the kids, understanding the kids, how they're wired, their DNA, and the, you know, the things that, that, that go on with them. And uh, I hope and I pray that if, if, if it's all about you, um, then sooner or later it's going to be nothing about you because you're going to be by yourself. Okay, you need to know that. If it's all about you, sooner or later it's going to be nothing about you because you're going to be by yourself. Um, people are not going to stay around selfish people. And uh, marriage and family is not about being selfish. It's about being selfless. Okay, and we must ensure that we're selfless. And and when you decide uh, to get married and be with somebody, you made up your mind. Yeah, hey, I'm gonna be a selfless person. I'm whatever I need to do to make this work. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna give myself. You know, we sing that song in worship time. I give myself away. Well, that's what you're saying. That's why they have the marriage where they bring the bride down the aisle. And who giveth this woman? Who gives her to be married to this man? She's giving herself away. Okay, in the same sense, we need to always understand that as it relates to marriage. Everybody stand with us. Everybody stand with us. We just want to pray for the families today. We just want to believe God for the families. Uh, we want to believe God. For the main thing we want to believe God is for understanding. Um, I was, uh, I read something the other day. Um, and uh, I meant to write it down, but I was traveling and I didn't get an opportunity to write it down. And so what I, what, how I say it may not be the direct quote of how it is. Um, but it says something like this. Two people who have a successful marriage are two people who know how to forgive each other. Because no success in family will work unless you know how to forgive each other. If you can't forgive, it ain't gonna work. It won't be successful. And there are some things that my wife had to forgive me for. There have been some things I had to forgive her for. That's why we've been married 28 years. Because we learned how to forgive each other. If you don't learn how to forgive each other, then it's not gonna work. And that's a part of the understanding that you must have in, as it relates to family. You got to learn how to forgive and, and look at it from the perspective of the other person. So let's pray. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you and we praise you, Father. We thank you, God, for all that you've done and how you established family and how you established marriages. And Father God, we pray Father, that you would, oh God, give us the wisdom. Father, give us the understanding that we need for each other. For the very people that you have in trust.